Eric Cortina here and Jason, anti-medic. <laughs> anyway, uh, we have a cool project today for you. Well, this is going to be part one of the 6.5 Needmore series. We have two identical 6.5 Needmores. We labeled each. This is number one, and this one is number two. These are pretty basic, pretty much as basic as they can get. Right off the shelf. <laughs> These are uh, Remington 700s, and uh, by the way, let's take a moment. A moment of silence for Remington. Tell us about the rifles. So, straight up, the only thing that's not off the shelf is the optics and, and you know, the rail, the mount, and, and the optics. And it's just a, it's an even playing field for this project. So the reason we did this, as far as the optics, is we wanted to test the rifles. And in order to do that, we needed very reliable optics so that if we have any large grouping any flyers any anything we don't have to question the optics it's all on the rifle as 100%. far as the shooter goes jason former uh, special forces sniper so the shooter we can say is pretty good so that just leaves the rifles okay so today we're going to do a simple test pretty much what you would do when you go to the range we're going to bore sight them and sight them in and then shoot Couple of groups. Couple of groups. That's it. Get some chronograph data and see how they do. Uh, again, this is a 24 inch barrel, uh, blind magazine. You don't even have a, a real mag in here. We're shooting Burger factory ammunition, 130 grain. And that's it. Pretty simple. Pretty simple. All right. Uh, I don't know what else we can tell you about it. Pretty bare bones. If you look up the price of the optics plus the MDT mount plus the MDT rail. Yeah. But, again, we wanted good, reliable optics. Six times the cost of the rifle alone. <laughs> yeah. But, <laughs> again, we're trying to isolate the rifle. And that's it. Shooting it off a of Harris bipod. Off of the uh, sling. So, again, very basic. This is what you would have to do if you went and bought this rifle because obviously they don't have a pick rail to attach to uh the stocks are uh you know pretty flimsy kind of seem kind of short at least to me probably to you as well <laughs> it's a toy <laughs> just a toy but anyway we'll see how they shoot and we're going to compare the two and uh so the Eventually, what we plan to do is pick the best of the two and then modify the other one. We're going to start adding modifications such as trigger, stock, uh, tuner brake, and see how, how good we can make it. Yep. Anyway, let's go shoot them. See how they do. Hell what yeah, what are your expectations? It. Not much. <laughs> <laughs> now, I'm keeping the bar low so I can be pleasantly surprised. All right, so Jason's uh, set up. He's gonna shoot the uh, need more number one. We're gonna get it sighted in, and uh, then shoot some groups. See how it does. Gonna shoot over the chronograph. So everything. We're gonna find out what what the speed is. What is your uh, expectation? Twenty eight fifty. Twenty eight fifty. Okay, I'm gonna go with twenty nine hundred. Uh, see how they do. All right, man. Hammer down. The need more. How long has it been since you shot a rifle like this? I don't know. I can't remember. <laughs> it's going to be fun. So Jason's bore sighting it right now. So what he did is remove the bolt. Now he's looking down the bore at the target. And now he's going to bring the crosshairs to the center of the target once it gets the rifle lined up. You obviously don't want to move the rifle once you get it lined up. This is called bore sighting. Uh, 
Jesus, there's nothing to this rifle. Holy smokes, we're both way off. What was it? Oh. Well, that's the first one. It still has to speed up. It's a brand new barrel. All right. So we're shooting Burger 130s out of it. 2700. It looks like it needs more. <laughs> oh Lord. How's it looking? Consistent, it's shooting groups. Good. <laughs> I don't like how you said it, but. Yeah. <laughs> 27.08. Not bad. ES of 35, SD of 10.9. First 10 shots. This is the 6.5 Need More, number one. <laughs> we actually never measured these barrels. But I say it's 24, you say it's 20. Yes. Let's put a tape measure to it. 24. If you have the modified tape measure that you carry around, it is 20. Is this a... <laughs> All right, so before we forget, we're gonna reseal the knobs. Now, call is this this pretty cool thing, if you've never seen it. You remove this. And right here, you have a key. That's for your uh, for your turrets. Anyway, I'm gonna get these uh, C road, and we're gonna go shoot the need more number two. So this is need more number two. Jason's bore sighting it right now. Then he's gonna sight it in, and then he's gonna shoot a couple of groups. See how it does. Oh, holy shit! <laughs> it jumps all over the place, doesn't it? Any different? No, but yes. <laughs> okay. Let's see where the numbers are on this one. So what he's erasing because he has a trigger attached to his bipod and this thing jumps all over the place. <laughs> when he brings it back, sometimes it triggers the shot. Look at that. <laughs> that bipod was jumping around. <laughs> all right. See what the numbers are for this one. 2697. ES of 36, SD of 12.7. So the average speed is pretty close to one another. Very close. That's not bad. I mean, down range is going to be a little different. Oh, really? Yep. All right, let's go see. Sun's coming up. All right, so we're back. Jason did all the trigger pulling. And we have the results. Yes, we do. <laughs> All right, first was number one, which is this one right here. Tell me what happened here. Just started, bore sighted the rifle, and then once I bore sighted it, I was aiming center mass of the target just to see where I would hit on paper. That's that shot. And then I worked from the upper left, which would be here. 
So that'd be one, um, two, three, and four, trying to get it zeroed, and then just kind of kept chasing it. So fired my 10 rounds, called it zeroed, got up, and moved on. Seems like you were pretty disappointed. Go ahead and circle these uh, this group so it's easier to see. It's It, it was, it was um, hard to get the rifle to settle and have decent follow through. Is this part of the first group? Yep. Oh, did not realize that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So these are the groups. <laughs> group number one, group number two. This is going to require a tape measure. Yep, definitely. <laughs> four inch square, so there you go. <laughs> yeah, the square is four inches. So, uh, yeah, this thing's shooting like four MOA. We don't need to measure that. No. We can say four MOA. You satisfied Easily. with that? I'm satisfied with that. <laughs> now, the, the, the numbers were not bad on the chronograph. No, very consistent. Uh, 2,700. Yep. Uh, 2,708, I think, was the average. So, SD of 10. So, the ammo is performing. Uh, we're going to assume the shooter is. The optics are performing. The only thing that's left is that rifle. Now, keep in mind, these are the first shots out of these both of these rifles. Yep. Now, this is... Uh, so this is one, two, so this is shot three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yep. Okay. Oh, all right. This goes with number one. <laughs> all right, so now on to need more number two. As you can see it's already looking much better. So tell us how this went. Not obviously a lot better. Um, bore sighted it and then had the some uh, difficulties. There was some brush preventing me from seeing this round, and then I zinged one and ricocheted it in. <laughs> and then no, I, I think you hit it. I think there was a screw on the board. I think that's what happened. It might have been, um, but finally started tracking on paper here, still aiming at the center. It's like, all right, we're good. Came up a couple, and then. Two rounds here, and then finish it up with four rounds right here. I can't see your hand. Oh, my bad. <laughs> <laughs> four rounds right here. <laughs> okay, so this is uh, two groups. This is two rounds here, and then this is four rounds. Three pretty much in the same hole. Correct. And one little bit out. Either way, uh, the first two rounds are... Three-eighths of an inch. Three-eighths. And the last, well, let's measure the first three. That's, uh, man, that's like three-eighths MOA. But we have to count the other one. It's part of the group, so it gets counted. You do not omit anything. So I'm going to call that one MOA. Okay. I'm happy with that. So this number two. Pretty much we can call that a one MOA rifle. Definitely. Or under. I mean, that, that showed some real promise. Now, again, the numbers were not as good as this one. They were slightly different. Slightly. Uh, the average speed was within 10 feet a second, so we can call that the same. So, again, we can say the ammo is very consistent. Yep. Uh, this one definitely shoots better. Definitely. SD was... 12. That was... Yeah, this was 12. That um, was 10. So... Uh, I guess we can say that maybe the Remington consistency is not great. Maybe. But <laughs> <laughs> either way, here are the results. All right, what's next? So number two is definitely going to be the control gun. Nothing's okay. going to happen to it. As it sits right now is how it will be fired throughout the rest of the testing. Um, mm -hmm. And then the rifle one, um, we modify. Okay. We make better. So... Because it needs more. It needs more. <laughs> All right. So, what would you do first? It seemed like you were not having a very good time holding on to this thing. It seemed like it was bouncing all over the place. Yeah, very unstable. Un stock, un uncomfortable to be. Stock be seems shorter. Yep. Uh, not not shorter, but short. Yep. Very. You know, obviously, it doesn't ride the bag very well. Not at all. Uh, trigger, triggers. It's a Remington it's trigger. It's a Remington trigger. <laughs> <laughs> She's heavy. So, what should we do first? Oh, that's... 
Because there's so many things we can do. There is. So let's just name a few, right? We can change the trigger. We can change the trigger. But that doesn't change the comfort level. Nope. Right? Now, obviously, the trigger is good enough to shoot pretty decent groups, right? It definitely is. And, you know, so uh, let's, uh, well, I if mean, it was your rifle, what would you change So first? we're going to look at the rifle. We know we can adjust some on mm -hmm. this, so right. let's not do the trigger. But if we're looking at the stock, obviously it's an issue. We're looking at some really close tolerances right here. So let's get the dollar bill out yep. and see if we're free floated. Yeah, and that may be one of the first things we do, free float that barrel. You, you want those barrels free floating. Uh, and that may be, well, we'll check them. Let's see how far it goes. Make sure it's a dollar bill because it's a dollar hundreds bill. Hundreds are thicker. Yeah, the, the hundreds are a hundred times <laughs> thicker, so you don't want to do that. So it won't even start. No. So we have some major contact with the stock. Now let's check that one. I don't expect it to do it, be any better. Because, you know, consistent. <laughs> it's, it's it got same. a little further. <laughs> so, oh, free dollar. <laughs> it's, it's a tool, man. You got to keep one of these tools with you at all times. So, I guess what we're going to do, maybe free float that one. Just uh, just to give it the best chance of being consistent. Maybe that's part of the, the flyer. Because this thing is hopping all over the place. It is. But, obviously, with your experience, you're able to do some pretty good groups. Okay, so we free float that one, and what do you think? Change the stock? Change the stock. Let's get comfortable behind the, the gun. Okay, that's going to be the first thing we do. We're going to come back and see how it does, and hopefully it starts to get better. Hopefully. <laughs> and we'll go from there. All right, uh, come back next time where, you know, we're going to upgrade this thing. The Need More series. So this is episode one of the 6.5 Needs More. And this one definitely needs more. It needs a lot more. <laughs> All right. See you next time. Have a good one. Keep them centered. And I